VR is expensive. Up until recently, you needed at least $1,000 on a VR capable rig. But with AMD's new RX 480 starting out at $200, it's made uh, baseline VR PCs much more affordable. With that said, I set out to build a $700 VR PC to show you that you don't need an insane amount of money to build a VR capable rig. And yes, that includes the $100 OS. Because VR is so graphically demanding, our PC is going to need a beefy GPU. VR requires the graphics cards to render not only at a high resolution, but at a high frame rate consistently above 90 frames per second to ensure a smooth, immersive experience. At the heart of the build is AMD's RX 480 GPU, which is built on the company's new Polaris architecture. At $200, it's the cheapest graphics card designed for VR out on the market. The card features 2,304 stream processors, a 1266 MHz boost clock, and 4 GB of VRAM. It's a little faster than NVIDIA's GTX 970, which is a VR-capable card costing $300 plus. VR can be CPU intensive, especially when the computer calculates head tracking. So the rig's brain is AMD's 8-core FX8350. It carries a 4 GHz stock clock, and at $160, it's the cheapest CPU that meets Valve's VR requirements. The spine of our build is Gigabyte's sexily named 970A-UD3P motherboard, which has the AM3 Plus socket support we need for our CPU. For a little over 60 bucks, it also offers USB 3.0 ports. For RAM, we got 8GB of DDR3 memory from G-Skill. We could have gone with slower 1366 memory to shave a couple of bucks, but opted for a pair of faster 1600MHz sticks. This allows us to run the RAM in dual channel mode for more bandwidth. And despite costing less than $40, it comes with some nice heat spreaders. For storage, we went with a 240GB Corsair Force LE solid state drive. We could have saved money by going with a cheaper hard drive for more storage, but it makes more sense to add a hard drive later, since you want the OS on the faster SSD. Plus, most VR games are currently made by small indie studios, and games are relatively small in size. For our case, we're housing everything in Deepcool's test rack chassis. The case is under $40 and doesn't look bad for the price, plus it has front USB 3.0 ports. While the case comes in a variety of colors, we opted for one in white. Powering everything is EVGA's 450B PSU. The 450 watt power supply is enough for all of our components running at stock clocks. We'd recommend something beefier if you intend to overclock. Finally, the last piece of the puzzle is the operating system. Windows 10 costs about 100 bucks. So let's put it all together. With the computer built up, we thought a good point of comparison would be Dell's XPS 8900 PC, which is VR ready. Dell's PC includes a GTX 970 GPU, an Intel Core i5-6400 CPU, and 8GB of RAM. So how well did it hold up? In Valve's Steam VR Performance Benchmark, it scored a 6.7, which is a VR ready score that ensures we'll have a consistent, smooth experience. For context, this is slightly higher than Dell's 6.6 .6 score. I also ran Time Spy on both rigs, which is Futuremark's latest benchmark. Our build scored 3,782 here, which is 19% higher than Dell's 3,167 score. With the benchmarks out of the way, we were able to jump right into VR to shoot robots and zombies in no time. As you can see from our PC, you don't need to break the bank to build a VR-ready rig.